Welcome to the last part of analyzing GitHub data with Firebolt. And today we're going to take a look at how we actually ingest the data. If you remember from the first video, we actually saw how the data is structured in terms of an hourly gzip JSON file and each line contains an event. And this is actually really good for Firebolt because it allows us to index the data pretty easily without doing modifications on the JSON file. So all we basically have to do is downloading all the hourly archives and putting them into an own S3 repository and then go from there. So let's take a look. In order to index data, we basically need two tables. One is a so-called external table, which refers to the files lying in S3. And the other one is the actual table used for queries. And the first one we're gonna define is the external table. This one simply has an ex underscore prefix over here and refers to this. So you see here, we have to specify where this external table is. In our case, it's a directory in an S3 bucket. We have to specify the object pattern that should be used to load files. We have to specify whether they are compressed or not. In the case of JSON data, it just makes a lot of sense to keep it compressed because otherwise the data really grows big. And we're gonna define that we will pass the JSON to a text field, to a single text field. So after we've done this, all we can basically do is extract a whole row of JSON. The interesting part about these external tables is the ability that you can already query them. So we could already extract the repository name of a certain event or things like that. But for now, the important part is we have this now ready to be queried. The second thing we have to create is our table which stores the actual data. So looking at this, we see that there's a GH archive table that contains some standardized fields like the string fields for the event ID for the type, like a watch event or a pull request event, things like that. And then some generic information about who did this event, which repository was this event done on, and optionally, which organization was belonging to this event. And then we have a couple of files that are extracted from the payload. So each event is a little bit different, right? When you have a watch event, there's different data than if you open up a pull request and we have to cater for that. And a couple of things are sort of available in every single event. So we can unify those, but there are also many fields, if I scroll down a little, that are just available at the specific event. So we cannot really join or merge them together. They are just there and we can query them only if we query for a certain type of event. So those are the fields. And the last part at the bottom is interesting, uh, the primary index definition that we uh, defined and the partition. So the partition basically splits the data into smaller pieces. So in this example, we have a partition for every month of the data set and it also means it grows continuously. So after we defined our two tables, the next step is to actually access the external table and index into the uh, GH archive table. That's basically happening right here. And we see here, we run an insert into GitHub archive based on a select. And the select now is doing all the magic by retrieving the single event as a single line and then extracting information out of that by using the JSON extract function. So JSON extract allows us to access specific fields like ID and type and map them to the event ID and the event type fields that we defined in the GitHub archive table. Yeah, we do the same with dates. So moving from a ISO 8601 date to a, a SQL date. And this happens throughout all of the events. And now there's a few specialties to that. For example, if we want to put different paths of a JSON event into the HTML URL, because depending on what kind of event we have, um, the parse is basically yeah, different. We have to have some sort of yeah, unification mechanism. And this is what this big case statement is actually doing. Depending on the event, we can extract different parts of the JSON payload and put it into the HTML URL so that we know that whenever I query this field, it's filled as I need it and I don't have to check for the event first. And this mechanism can be used for a couple of things. We can also transform arrays of data so that we can extract 
the login field within each assignee and only store that in an array field. So there's a couple of options that we can do to really transform our JSON-based data as part of inserting it. And of course, the farther we go down, we go basically back to the event-based data where we just extract the payload in case we have this as an event. And at the end of all of this, uh, there's one useful feature, and that is that we can actually store the source file name and the source file timestamp within each data set. And this helps us to identify where the data came from. Now, given the fact that our data is basically GitHub based and time based, this is not really needed, but it still allows us to figure out where the data came from. And one other thing is that using the source file name, we can actually support incremental updates because the way you would inert this data is that you download it from the GitHub archive, you upload it into your bucket, and then you just say, I want to index the data from the last week because that may be just the last incremental step that you need to do. And instead of re-indexing this whole major data set, you could just specify the source file name, matching your directory structure in the S3 bucket and making sure you're just updating the last 11 days in this example. And so you don't need to write data twice, which would not be needed in any append-only use case. And yeah, the last part is making sure that some data apparently doesn't have fields that, that are required in our use case. So I just don't index this data as part of the, the update process. And this is basically all the logic behind our index process. So it's about defining fields, um, setting up the external table and the regular table, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed our lesson into the analyzing the GitHub data with Firebolt. Have a good day.